Today, we're going to find out which fin you should be choosing and why. To do this, I'm going to quickly reveal the general benefits for each fin, for the pivot and the raked fin, and then I'm also going to give you an insight into my decision making for these fins and why I choose the fins I do. What we'll then do is we're going to put this to the test. I'm going to head out in the water, try the pivot versus the raked fin, and we're going to compare with how these fins differ with respect to nose rides, turns, and then the overall general feel and approach. And just a little heads up, the result was not what I was expecting, which is kind of cool after 15 years of surfing and still learning something new. If you are new here, my name is Ben Considine and I'm here to support the longboard community through educating and also sharing my learnings and experiences with you all. If you do find it useful today, please feel free to subscribe. And if you know anyone else who might get something from this, then feel free to share that with them as well. But let's get into the video. So firstly, I wanted to run you through which fin I usually use and when, what circumstances and for what maneuvers that might benefit them the most. Now, as you can see, I've got a broad selection of fins that I have to choose from, but the ones that we're actually going to test today, which I would say are the furthest apart from each other in terms of design, are this one and this one. So to give you a bit of an understanding of the fins we'll be riding today as well, so this is the big pivot fin. I actually really rarely uh, surf anything like this. Again, I tend to go with something that's uh, got a little bit more rake. The uh, thing that I have closest to this is my signature fin um, with South Coast Surfboards. Um, this has a little bit more of a rake, as you can see, but it still holds a really nice and wide base, which I like for being able to lock out into the pocket. And then we've got this. Uh, this has been my pretty standard raked fin that I've been using at the moment. Um, as you can see, uh, pulls out really nice along the rake at the back end here, but then maintains a little bit of base down the bottom. I've been having a lot of fun with this one. Again, really enhances some nice long drawn out turns, which I really like. Let's start with a quick broad overview of what each fin does best and why we might consider to choose these fins. And let's see how this translates into the water as well. So the first one here is the big pivot fin. Fins like this uh, typically have two main purposes. What they're aimed to do is firstly act as a massive anchor to hold the tail in when you nose ride. It can be in some really, really critical sections and there's pretty much no chance of that fin sliding out. So massive, massive benefit of this one. The other thing that it aims to do, as the name suggests, what it is really good at doing is quick pivot turns. Because it doesn't have that elongated rake or arc through the fin, it won't hold the turns quite as well through a uh, long carving turn. But it does lend itself to a bit more of a quicker turn, turning a little bit tighter so the tail will stay relatively in a similar position on the wave to make that turn occur, rather than carving out a long arc like this fin will here. So for this fin, this is the more general all-rounder fin, the Greeno style template or the raked fin as well. What I like about this one as a general rule and overview is I think it flows really, really nicely um, from rail to rail and it does produce a really nice hold of the fin if you are gonna do some more elongated carving turns. It does provide you that option to go a little bit further and harder with your turns, which is something that uh, I've got a little photo here, but if you see these big powerful turns, if you're trying to push a lot of weight into that tail, I feel like it's much better to have something like this than your pivot fin because it will hold a little bit better. These things, they still hold really well on the nose, but depending on what length you go for, there is a little bit more chance of slipping out of the pocket. So just something to keep in mind as well. All right, and so what I wanted to do today was to standardize things as much as possible. So that being said, both fins here, 10 inches, although they're different designs. So um, hopefully that won't play as much of a factor in how different everything is surfing. The other things that we're gonna focus on is we're gonna keep the board the same. So I'm gonna be riding this board the entire time. And the fin positioning is gonna be placed all the way back into the fin box, which is the place that I typically like to keep it as well, to keep the nose rides in and the turns probably a little stiffer and tighter than they would be otherwise. We're gonna keep it to about four to five waves max for each fin so that we don't have a scenario where I'm catching way better waves on one fin versus the other or spending more time and getting used to things. So let's get into it. So of course, the waves didn't cooperate as I'd hoped, but hopefully this will give you a good idea of how these fins actually work in the more realistic conditions, rather than when the waves are super perfect and anything would go well. I started off with the pivot fin. The first thing I noticed most was for the overall feel. There was a pretty significant difference in the speed of the board. It did feel like with the bigger fin, I was being pulled back and slowed down a fair bit on the wave. I did end up getting the feel for this, but in the smaller conditions, it was a bit of a battle at times to continue along with the wave due to this loss of speed. 
let's get into the turns for this fin as well. Turns out here today weren't really for the long drawn out turns, just because of the short nature of the waves. If you tried to put the board on rail just a little bit, it didn't tend to go particularly well. It was much better to quickly disengage your rail and pivot turn. You can see how with the pivot fin, it really felt like the board just more naturally wanted to engage the inside rail earlier. And as a result, it kind of forced me to more quickly place a bit more weight onto the tail so I wouldn't bog it. And this just created a really nice and necessary lift of the nose, which created some shorter but well carried out turns for the conditions that we were in. Now, let's get into the nose rides. With the pivot fin, there was a significant drag and pull back into the pocket when I was on the nose. I think this helped a lot because it felt like I had more confidence to launch myself into the critical component of the wave and position my body further forwards on the nose because I trusted that the fin would engage and slow me down and pull me back into the pocket. There were times on the pivot fin though that I felt like I was held back or slowed down a little bit too much. Now I rarely surf a fin like this so I felt like if I had have been more accustomed to surfing something like this that I would have been able to figure this out a bit sooner but I certainly did need to correct for that out in the water as well. Now it was time to move to the all rounder fin to see how things would change. The overall feel here was just that of having a little bit more flow and connection with the wave. I just felt that through the in-between sections and turns, it was a little less rocky and more stable in a sense. The nose rides was probably where I noticed most of a difference. Whereas with the pivot fin, I found that there was a benefit having the slowed pace on the nose with it feeling like it would slow my rhythm and pull me back into the pocket, which wasn't quite the case for the all-rounder fin. Here, it just felt like I needed to be a little bit more cautious of my nose ride positioning because it felt like I might have had a greater chance of sliding out of the pocket and into the flats more easily, which I found really interesting to compare to the pivot as more recently I have just been riding that more heavily raked out fin. So it was kind of good to see what I've been missing out on. As for the turns, I think we learned from being on the pivot fin previously that using the pivot turns out in the water today was definitely the go. And I definitely didn't tilt the board on its rail as quickly as I had when I was using the pivot fin. This fin did have a more drawn out feeling with the turns as we previously discussed. Where the main difference was, however, was with this turn here. A critical turn when the wave was steepening out towards the end of the wave, which I feel as though with the pivot fin, it might have been harder to control. But with the raked fin, this held no issues at all. And I think this highlighted to me something that I hadn't put into these specific words before, but the all-rounder fin really emphasizes control through turns where the pivot fin doesn't. So I hope that helped to give you a bit of an understanding of how both fins looked and the, the differences between them. There were a few really important and interesting takeaways that I think I had for myself out there today, which I wanted to discuss quickly because again, these are things that I hadn't really considered before and um, I think will be pretty interesting for you guys to hear about as well. The first thing is that in the small conditions, I actually think I preferred the pivot fin. Um, this went against what I would usually uh, consider because I do either ride the more uh, heavily raked out fin or that hybrid, but very rarely a pivot fin itself. But I did find that with regards to the pivot fin, you were able to pivot on those turns and disengage the rail a lot quicker because it did feel a little bit more tilty in the turns. So naturally I felt like, all right, let's disengage the rail so I can turn a bit more quickly as that's what the pivot fin is made for. I think that that held itself really well to the conditions I was out there in the small stuff today because there was no real room for those long drawn out carving turns. I also found that the pivot fin was really good at maintaining and holding those nose rides as well. Um, again, I felt like I could just kind of put myself in the most critical spots as possible and it would just hold me back and draw me into the pocket. Whereas with that raked out fin, it did feel like I had a little less stability and security on the nose. So an unexpected result, I actually prefer the pivot fin, I think, in the smaller conditions, which is something that I'm gonna have to consider for my uh, coming surfs because as I spoke about, it's not typically what I do. But the other big takeaway that I had today from these fins is the comparison and contrasting the differences between the two. I think a good way to put it is that the pivot fin allows for control through nose rides and the all-rounder fin allows for control through turns. So it's a little bit of a pick and choose what you would like to prefer on the day. If you want to be holding it in the pocket and no chance of sliding out, 
then go for your pivot fin. If you really want to harness good control from the tail, carving out your turns, that's where the raked fin really comes into play. But I think that's a really nice blanket statement that we can kind of use to direct our thoughts of whether we want a fin that's more that pivot type shape and design or whether we want the more greeno and raked out fin. Now obviously the today's results might have varied if the waves were bigger, if they were point break waves and everything like that. Um, I still think that the raked out fin for myself is the way to go in those conditions because there's just more uh, variety that you can do with your turns and everything like that. And there's more control through the tail, which is important in bigger waves. I think nonetheless, this was a really, really cool experiment. I know I learned a lot and I hope that you guys were able to get a fair bit from that as well. Really hope that you guys got a fair bit out of that. Um, just as a quick closing statement, we're still selling the, the Glide Surf Collective product. So if you did want to check any of that out, then feel free to check that out in the link below. But we'll see you on the next one. Come